Hello everybody, it's Josie here. I'm going to be doing a video today featuring all of these books. Um, no, don't be scared, I won't go into a lot of detail on one of them. Basically, this is my 20 books that I have to read uh, before the end of the year. So, I did a 20 books to read uh, for the first half of the year. I've gotten through all of those. Um, and these ones are books, it's a mixture of some that are new, some that I really want to get to because I'm kind of into the genre at the moment, or some that have been sitting on my TBR shelf for ages and I really need to read them this year. So um, I'll quickly run through all of these. I won't be too much in detail because obviously as I read them, um, I will talk about them and I will do a wrap up of uh, all of these books and whether I actually read them and what I thought of them uh, at the end of the year. So here goes. So first pile, um, the first pile over here starts with this book over here by Emma Donahue called The Wonder. And I believe this is set in a small rural town. And there's a girl in this town who hasn't eaten anything for, for ages, for, for months, but she's alive and thriving. Um, and the story focuses around uh, Lib, who's the, the main character, who's sent to this town to kind of investigate the wonder that is happening in the town. And I love Emma Donahue, so I'm expecting that to be good. Then we've got Innocence and Others by Dana Spiotta. Um, this one is a uh, queer female-female romance, and it says it's about um, a documentary makers, so they make like a feminist slant documentaries, and I believe there's kind of a bit of an intrigue thriller kind of aspect to this as well, as well as a female-female romance, so I'm expecting this to be good, plus it has a really great cover. I'm really, I saw this cover, I was really attracted to that cover. Then we've got this book over here, Zoe Hellier's um, Notes of a Scandal, uh, or On a Scandal. Uh, this is quite famous. This was turned into a film, uh, kind of an award-winning film. And again, it focuses on two women and their teachers, I believe. Um, and one woman discovers that one of the teachers is having an affair, and I believe it's with a female student. Um, so again, there's a bit of uh, blackmail and intrigue, um, and it's supposed to be quite complex and, and really good kind of psychological thriller-ish. So really looking forward to that. Then I've got this one over here and this one is called Hex. So this is, I'm going to say it, this is one of my October reads. I've already got quite a few books lined up that I'm going to read in the kind of Halloween season. And this one just sounds great. So it says, a, 7th century, a 17th century woman with sewn shut eyes and mouth walks its streets, enters its homes, watches its people when they sleep. They call her Black Rock Witch. And that's in this town called Black Spring. So I think that sounds really good. It's very spooky. Yeah, what more can I say? <laughs> then we've got this one over here, Proud, and um, this is edited by Juno Dawson, put together by Juno Dawson, and you have a whole host of short stories by writers. I think there's some fiction, non-fiction kind of woven into this, but it's all about LGBTQIA, it's about being proud, um, and as a member of the community, I kind of have to read it, had to pick it up. It sounds incredible. I'm going to kind of leave this for Pride Month. So August, where we have Pride here in Brighton, um, I tend to get out all my LGBTQIA books, and this will definitely be one of them. Um, then the next stack I have, speaking of LGBT, is this one over here. This is A Love Story for Bewildered Girls by Emma Morgan. And this sounds like it's going to be funny. It's going to be heartbreaking. It's going to be beautiful. So it's a love story between two girls. Um, but what really intrigued me was um, kind of the blurb starts with Grace leads what 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 one might call a full and interesting life, which is code for not married and has no kids. Um, and then someone called Grace kind of walks into her life. And I think, yeah, I just think it's going to be uh, to be a fun kind of, I hope it's going to be a slightly meet cute uh, female female romance, um, but also with a bit of heart to it. So, looking forward to that. Then, the next one I've got is Angela Carter's The Bloody Chamber. Um, so, this is kind of a retelling of uh, myths and, and fairy tales, but with kind of a feminist, slightly darker twist on it. Um, and again, I think this is going to be on my kind of October TBR. Uh, Angela Carter's is kind of a, a cool writer, so I'm looking forward to that. Then we've got this one over here, um, The Black Dahlia by James Elroy. Um, now, the Black Dahlia, the Black Dahlia murders are real murders, uh, or Black Dahlia murder that happened in Los Angeles in the uh, 47, I was going to say 50s. Um, and this is a kind of fictionalized retelling of that, um, of the murders, what happened, uh, kind of the investigation. So I'm looking forward to reading that and because it ties in with real life, I quite like that. And then speaking of tying in with real life, we've got The Danish Girl. Um, this is the movie tie-in, as you can see. Uh, this is basically um, inspired by the true story of the first uh, male to female transgender um, person. And 
their kind of the relationship with their wife uh, and going through that transition. So I think, again, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be poignant. I can't believe I haven't actually read this. I also have not seen the film. I didn't want to see the film until I read the book. So I really need to read the book. <laughs> Um, and then the next one, another one of my October reads, is Ray Bradbury's Something Wicked This Way Comes. This is kind of classic horror. It's actually set at Halloween, I think. Yeah, it's the week before Halloween. You've got two boys, you've got a fairground, like a haunted fairground. Sounds like right up my alley. Sounds like it's going to be spooky. Perfect for a Halloween read. Then the next set of books ah, <laughs> is these ones over here. So starting off with Anne Rice Blackwood Farm. Uh, I kind of am on a mission to pick up all of Anne Rice's books secondhand if I can. This one um, I want to get to pretty soonish because it is the, uh, it's kind of a crossover between the Vampire Chronicles and the Mayfair Witches. So if you've read The Witching Hour, I'm really into witches. Um, this one kind of weaves those, those characters in together, I believe. So um, I'm expecting this to be really good. Uh, so I can't wait to get to that one. Then we've got The Poison Tree by Erin Kelly. And this again, I believe, is a, it's kind of a, a friendship between two women. One is sort of the wild girl and one is the good girl. Um, but I believe there's also kind of a thrillery aspect and also possibly a romance, um, kind of a, a, a friends to lovers sort of aspect to this. So looking forward to that one. Then this one over here, this one I picked up on a whim, it's Wake. So this is a YA novel, um, but I believe it's kind of a slightly d dark mermaid tale, um, which I love, uh, Mira Grant's, uh, the, uh, the, oh God, right, no, it's not called The Rising Deep. Oh God, I can't even think of the title, but the Mira Grant book about the, the killer mermaids. Um, I love that. Um, so I'm hoping that this one is going to be kind of a bit, Bit, bit of a bad mermaid uh, in the best possible way. And actually, I think it was Murphy Napier was talking about this one and she liked it. So that was kind of all the recommendation I needed. I'm hoping it's gonna be good. The next one is Resurrecting Amelia. So this is a thriller. So this is about a mother whose daughter has apparently committed suicide, but she's not 100% convinced it is suicide. So she's investigating what actually happened to and kind of uncovering the secret life of her daughter. I think it's probably going to be quite difficult in places. I'm expecting it to be a thriller that might be a little bit more emotional, which I'm hoping for. It also gives me vibes of Sadie, which I'm also really imminently gonna get to reading. So I kind of hope and feel like it might be in that same vein. Then this one, Romeo and Juliet and Vampires. That's all I'm gonna say. Huda, ut, Romeo, Juliet, Vampires. It sounds amazing. I have to read it. I can't really say anything else about that. Um, and then the last stack of books <laughs> is All the Invisible Things. In case the cover didn't give it away, this is an LGBTQIA book. Um, and this is, uh, yeah, this, this sounds like it's going to be kind of a bit heartbreaking about the end of a friendship. Um, uh, again, maybe finding out that you're falling in love with a friend. Um, she she wants to, so Verity, I think, Vetti, sorry, is the main character, she's 17. She kind of just wants to be herself um, and she comes back to London and she's ready to live openly as I believe it's a bisexual woman. Um, but yeah, so this just sounds, this just sounds good. Again, it's gonna be on my kind of pride uh, TBR list. Then also on that list, we have We Are Okay by Nina LaCour. I love Nina LaCour, I know everything leads to you, which is beautiful. Um, and this one sounds like it's gonna be a lot more heartbreaking. Um, you've got a girl whose uh, best friend has died, I think, um, and she goes back to college um, and she's also queer. Um, and it just sounds like it's gonna be quite poignant and quite sad, but also really beautiful if I know Nina LaCour's writing. Then the next one, is Stir Fry by Emma Donoghue. Uh, this is, I believe, one of her very first books and it's set in an Irish college and it's about, uh, I believe, a queer female-female romance. So, relationship. So, clearly, I'm there for that one. Um, speaking of queer female-female romances, I have a theme. Um, My Summer of Love um, by Helen Cross. This has been turned into a film as well. And again, it focuses on, I think it's, yeah, it's 1984, uh, yeah, 1984, and you've got two teenagers. Again, you've got one who's, who I believe is more sort of the wild childish, and one that is more sort of seen as the good girl, and they become friends, and the friendship becomes uh, possibly sexual or romantic, uh, so it sounds like it's going to be really good. I've heard a lot of really good things about the film, so I'm really looking forward to reading the book, and again, a bit like with The Danish Girl, if I enjoy the book, 
I will watch the film as well. And then the last book you'll be happy to know is Little Monsters by, who wrote this? By Cara Thomas. Um, now this one, all I know about this one is that it's a thriller. Um, it's kind of, some people have said it's again, it's like Mean Girls or Pretty Little Liars, which I love. I have a real passion for Pretty Little Liars. Zoomed through that entire series. That's not the point of this video. Love Pretty Little Liars. So when somebody said that it was similar to Pretty Little Liars, I was like, well, I need to read it. I don't want to know too much about thrillers going into them, so I can't give you any more than that, but hey, that's it. So those are the 20 books that will definitely be on my TBR. Like I said, I will go through them more in detail when I read them, tell you what I thought of them, and tell you how I did at the end of the year. Um, so thank you for listening to me. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these. Uh, if you have any recommendations, I'd love to know. I'd also love to know what's on your TBR for the rest of the year, and I will speak to you all very soon. Bye-bye.